Hello, welcome to lesson 4. In this lesson, we are going to look at the conjugate point, the displacement of a lens when object and screen are fixed, and then the condition for the formation of a real image by a convex lens. Let's begin by looking at the conjugate points. So what are conjugate points? Uh, these are two points whereby if an object is placed at one of the points, uh, its image is formed at the other point by the lens. So when you place the object at one of the points, the image is formed at the other point. So this is what I'm talking about. If I place, for example, the object at O, the image is formed at I. And when I place the object at I, the image is formed at O. So this point, these two points O and I become conjugate points. They become conjugate points. So let us make a note here. Uh, the property of conjugate points is such that an object and its image at these points are interchangeable. So they are interchangeable. In other words, if I place the object here, the image is here. If I place the image, the object here, the image is formed here. So they are interchangeable. Let's look at the displacement of a lens when the object and the screen are fixed. So here we are going to consider a converging lens placed between an object and it and the screen. And the, of course here we are going to have two cases. We are going to have two cases of interest that we are going to be considering. We are going to have two cases of interest to consider. Uh, so let's look at the first case. That is the, the position of the screen is adjusted until the clear magnified image is obtained on the screen. That is the first case. And then in the second case, we are going to keep the screen and the object fixed, and then we shall adjust the lens, displace the lens, so that we get still the image being formed on the screen. And in the second case, we shall have this. Let us see this. So uh, we are going to, this is the object, place the screen, press the lens in front of the object, and then you are going to adjust the screen until when the final image is formed, final magnified image is formed on the screen. And then we shall keep the screen position um, fixed, and then the object position fixed, and then we shall adjust, in other words, displace this lens here to a new position, B, such that still a final image is got on the screen. Of course, they will be of different heights. For example, if you look at the height of the first formed by the lens when it is in this position, it will be this height is going to be this. Maybe this will be the H. As we may call this an H, and then this one here is maybe H prime. So or this one you can call it H1, and then the other one H2, and then this height will be H. So the heights are going to be different, but they are going to be at the same position. So we want to get that displacement d, d. That's what we are looking at. So first of all, we are going to, uh, we are going to, if you look at that, we can see that if you look at this distance is u and this is v for the first lens, so and this distance l. The l is the distance from o up to i. The l is the distance o up to i. That is from the object to the final image here. And therefore, we shall have our u as a, when the lens is at A, the u is going to be OA. And the V is going to be AI. Then when the lens is at B, the u is going to be OB. That is, and then the V is going to be BI. That means that uh, OB is the V for this second lens, and the O, that is OB, and then BI is the U for the 
second lens. While for the first lens, AO is the U and AI is the V. So that's why you're saying U is equal to O A and is equal to B I when V is equal to A I and is equal to O B. Because we are looking at the two cases. This is for the first case, this is for the second case. This is for the first case, this is for the second case. So when we look at the diagram, from the diagram U plus Z, when we have this one, this is U, we can see that U plus V is equal to L, but also AO plus AB plus BI is equal to L. So L is equal to AO plus AB plus BI. But we know AO is U, this one is D, and then this one is V. So U plus D plus V is equal to L, and therefore L, and when we add this, is going to be twice of L, is going to be, twice of U is going to be L minus D, and therefore U is going to be L minus D. And also we are saying that U plus V is equal to L, which implies that uh, V is going to be L minus U. But remember, we have said that U is L minus D divided by 2. So if we substitute for that, we shall get our V as D. Sorry, our V is going to be L plus D divided by 2. Now, we are going to replace for U and substitute for U and V in the lens equation. And that will give us and make F the subject, that is, get the focal length, we shall get F as UV over U plus V, which will give us this, U, V, U plus V. And that will give us F as L squared minus D squared divided by 4L. So the focal length of the lens is going to be given by L squared minus D squared over 4L. So this equation can be noted. Uh, so if I have the distance, if I measure the distance from the object to the screen, that's L, and I have the distance of the, the displacement D, then I can get the focal length of that lens. Hence I can say that if the displacement of D of the lens is, and the distance L between an object and the screen are measured, the focal length F of the lens can be determined. Now let us make a note here. And you need to note that the magnification, the magnification M1 produced by the lens when it is in position A is given by a image distance which, is, which was AI divided by the object distance which is OA. That is for the first case. So for the first case, the object distance is AI, so the image distance is AI and the object distance is OA. And then for the second case, it's going to be the object distance is OB. So the image distance is OB and the object distance is BI. So it means that for the first case, the magnification is going to be given by uh, AI divided by OA. But we know that uh, AI is V. AI is the V, which was L plus D divided by 2 and O A is the U, which is L minus D divided by 2. So if we divide, we shall have the V, which is L plus D divided by 2, over L minus D divided by 2, which will give us L plus D divided by L minus D. Then for the second case, we shall have the magnification for the, uh, when the lens is in position B, it will be the magnification M1, M2 will be given by BI divided by OB, where BI was the U, which is L divided by L minus 2 divided by 2, and the OB was V, OB was V, which is which we got as L plus D divided by 2. So when we replace for this, we substitute for V and the U, that is for BI and the OB, we substitute it here, we shall have L minus D divided by 2 over L plus D divided by 2. And when we uh, we divide, we shall have L minus D divided by 2 times 2 over L plus D. The 2's will cancel and we shall have L minus D over L plus D. Then the third note here is that the product, 
of the magnifications produced in the two cases is going to be this times that. Then we shall see that they are going to cancel out to 1. So that is going to be m1 times m2, which will give us, and this will cancel with that, and then this will also divide with this, and we shall get 1. So that means that the magnification, the total magnification in the, for the two positions is going to be 1. But also, if we had considered the, the height, if we consider the height, the magnification m1 can be given as h1 over h, and m2 can be given as h2 over h, and is equal to 1. So we can also have it in terms of, in terms of height, and shall have this. So we shall have 1 is equal to h1 over h times h2 over h, which will give us h1, h2 over h squared, where h1 is the image height for the first case, and then h2 is the image height for the second case, and then h is the object height. But remember, this is 1 from here. So this is going to be 1, and therefore shall have 1 is equal to h1, h2 over h squared. So it can sh we can show that h is actually equal to the square root of h1, times h2. So you can tell you to show something like this. So you need to know that that comes from the fact that the total magnification is 1, and then we can also get magnification using this. So consequently, the height h of an object can easily be found by measuring the lengths h1 and h2 of the images for the two positions of the lens. And this method of H, of measuring H, is most useful when the object is inaccessible. For example, we shall look at it when, when the width of the slit inside the tube is required, and also when the focal length of a thick lens is required. This we shall look at in the lessons coming on, that is when we are looking at the focal length, when we are determining the focal length of a, a convex lens. Let's look at the conditions for the formation of a real image by a convex lens. So the first condition is that the object distance must be greater than the focal length of the lens. The object distance must be greater than the focal length of the lens. Then the other condition is that the distance between the object and the screen must be at least four times the focal length of the lens. Let's look at this question here. The magnification of an object is in a converging lens is m. When the lens is moved a distance d towards the object, the magnification becomes m prime show that the focal length f of the lens is given by f is equal to d m m prime over m prime minus 1. So here we are having the object distance and then I've given us the displacement. So let us let the object distance be u. So when object distance is u, remember we have a relationship which connects u, f, and m. And that relationship is given by 1 over m is equal to u over f minus 1. And then that will give us the first equation. Then when we displace and or when we move that screen towards the object, that object distance is going to be reduced and will be reduced by d. So it is going to be u minus d. So the new object distance is going to be u minus d. And if we substitute for where there is u, we put u minus d, we shall have 1 over m1, so m prime is equal to u minus d over f minus 1. Then we shall look at the two equation, substitute, no, we shall not substitute, but we shall subtract equation 1 minus equation 2, and then we shall have 1 over m minus 1 over m prime is equal to uh, d over f. Then we shall make f the subject. If you make f the subject by first of all getting LCM here, working out this, and then cross multiplying to get f, and f will be d m m prime over m prime minus m. So we would have shown what was required here. Thank you.
for your attention. We meet in the next lesson.